my name is Steve Bevins, and I'm going to be your retreat master uh, in this year's online retreat. Um, as you know, <clears throat> the purpose of Catholics on Call uh, is to uh, help young adults discern a life of service in the church, or in other words, a life of ministry in the church. And, and this is why we thought this year we would focus on the idea of ministry, a theology of ministry, trying to understand more deeply what ministry is. So this is going to be the theme of this year's retreat. Now, of course, when you talk about ministry, you're talking about what they call, you know, one of those slippery words. It's a difficult idea to understand or especially to define or, or describe. And so, for instance, some people think that ministry is only the activity of those who are ordained, you know, so like bishops or priests or deacons, something like that. Other people say, you know, lay ministry is a contradiction in terms. You can't be lay and be a minister at the same time. But other people would say, well, you know, any task that builds up the church or contributes to the betterment of the world, things like, you know, being a good parent or being a good lawyer or making sure that you vote, you know, being a responsible citizen, those kinds of things. That's really what ministry is. Ministry is simply, you know, being a good person, uh, being a Christian, you know, something, something like that. Still others, though, would say, look, you don't necessarily have to be ordained to be a minister. Lay ministry is not a contradiction in terms. But ministry is something a little bit more formal. It's something that's public, uh, something you're installed into with some kind of ceremony. It's some kind of a service in the church's name. And so they'll make a distinction between, on the one hand, discipleship, which every Christian is because of baptism, and then ministry, which is the task of some Christians. Or some Christians, some time uh, in their life will be, uh, will, will be ministers. And this is really the idea of most theologians today of what ministry is about. And it's the idea that I'm going to basically be following in, uh, in, in, in this presentation. So our task on this online retreat is to get to a deeper understanding of ministry and in particular, Christian ministry. Certainly, there's other kind of ministry. You can be a good person uh, uh, and kind of, you know, uh, do good things. Um, you can, you know, the, the, certainly other religions. Uh, Judaism, for instance, has ministry, the, the rabbinate. Um, you know, Hindus have priests and uh, uh, Buddhists have priests. Uh, but, but we're talking here basically about Christian ministry. And um, we're not going to start with a definition, as I say, a definition of ministry. It's a, one of these slippery words. But we're going to start with a number of theses or uh, descriptions of ministry and come at ministry a little bit indirectly. And so as we go through, and I'm going to give you 14 points or 14 uh, theses over the course of the retreat, 14 descriptions of what ministry is. So we'll come at ministry kind of indirectly, but hopefully by the end of the retreat we'll have a clearer idea of what, uh, of what ministry is, is about. Now, how you might do this retreat would be in many, many different ways. You know, you could watch each of these seven segments separately. We're going to post them at different points uh, over the next several weeks. And after you listen to me talk, you could spend a few minutes in prayer and reflection afterwards. After each one of these seven presentations, 
I'm going to have a slide where I have two quotes or at least paraphrases of uh, quotations, which will give you something to uh, reflect on in, in addition to what I'm, I'm talking about. So you could do that, you know, watch a segment, spend a couple of minutes reflecting. Or maybe take a morning or an afternoon or an evening and watch several segments together, maybe three segments, something like that. And, you know, have pauses in between with prayer and reflection in between. And so make a nice uh, uh, afternoon uh, recollection, something like that. Or at the end of the month, when everything is, uh, is posted on the, on the website, take a day and watch the whole set of videos and breaking it up with prayer and reflection uh, after each one. If you want to share some ideas uh, with other people in, in Catholics on Call, there's a, a link to the Catholics on Call uh, Facebook groups page, and we have a blog, and you can uh, uh, participate in that. And also, a more formal set of texts are going to be posted after, uh, or rather, with each video uh, on the Catholics on Call page. So you can also use that to reflect a little bit more that way. So with that, let's, uh, let's begin, and let's start with our, with our first thesis. Our first thesis, or description of ministry, really basic, I think, is that Christian ministry is a witness to Jesus Christ. A number of years ago, I was a, a director of a theological reflection group here at CTU. And one of the seminarians uh, uh, said, as we were reflecting on ministry, you know, he says, even an atheist can be a minister. And, you know, I know what he was trying to say, that, you know, there are good people, uh, they do good deeds, there are humanists who, who do wonderful work in the world, uh, but that's not Christian ministry. Christian ministry really is the ministry of Christ. Uh, it's, it's the continuation. Uh, it's the sharing in the ministry of Christ. It's doing, continuing to do what Jesus did in, in his lifetime. And it seems to me that um, great description uh, of, of, of Christian ministry is found in, in uh, the New Testament in uh, St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, where he talks about the fact that God in Christ was recon reconciling the world to God's self. And God has entrusted that ministry to us. And Paul goes on to say, and so we are ambassadors of Christ. That's what Christian ministry is all about. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are, in other words, sacraments of Christ. The basic sacrament, uh, the basic ordination that we have as ministers, whether lay or ordained, is really that of baptism. This is what gives us the authorization. This is what gives us the power uh, to, be, uh, uh, to, to be ministers. Whether you're ordained or not, because of baptism, you really are another Christ. Uh, and so Christian ministry, as I say, does what Jesus did and does it very intentionally in Jesus' name. And so just like Jesus was open to the Spirit in his own ministry, so we, as Christian ministers, need to work to be open to the Spirit ourselves. And just as Jesus preached and served and witnessed to the reign of God, so that's what we have to be as well. We have to be preachers, servants, and witnesses to the reign of God. So this is the fundamental description of Christian ministry, the fundamental thesis of Christian ministry, as the Christian ministry is a witness to Jesus Christ. But let's go now to a second def uh, definition, or rather a second description of, um, uh, of, of ministry, and that is Christian ministry is ecclesial. In other words, it has to do with community. 
It has to do with the community of faith. It has to do with the church. We in the West, I think, sometimes are caught up in uh, individualism, which kind of came in with the beginning of modern times. Famous line of René Descartes, uh, you know, in the, in the 17th century. I think, therefore I am. So it's his experience which gives him his identity. And that's really the, the main thing about what it means to be a human being, that you are yourself. Frank Sinatra, I did it my way, you know, that, uh, that kind of idea. But for Christians, we're much closer to the famous African proverb that I am because we are. It's our family. It's our community. It's our culture that gives us our identity. And so when we talk about being ministers, we have to think of it in terms of being within a community, being in service to the community, and that is the community of faith and acting also in the name of that community of faith. So individual Christians don't make up the church. You know, it's not we are a bunch of individuals and then we form this group called church. Rather, it's the church that makes Christians, that makes individual Christians. So I think the, 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 the greatest sign of that is in baptism. I don't baptize myself. You know, I don't say, I baptize myself in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Someone else has to baptize me. And I think that's a great symbol of what Christianity is. It's about community. It's about being in relationship with, with others. And so it's not so much in ministry, my vocation. I decide that I'm going to be a minister and I do it in you know, my name, or I say I'm going to do it in Christ's name, but it's me who is doing it. It's not so much my decision. It's the church that sends me in ministry. It's not so much if I'm ordained you know, to the priesthood. It's not my priesthood. It's something that I participate in, uh, in the church, in the context of the church, always with the church. And when I minister, it's always in the name of the church. So this is really also a fundamental thesis or a fundamental idea about ministry. It's always within the context of the church. So let me give you uh, some uh, quotations to uh, reflect on. Uh, and the first one is that quotation that I mentioned before from... Um, uh, from the, the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ. And then the second quotation for your reflection, that great African proverb, I am because we are.